When people who don't know us look at Shopware, they might just think of us as an e-commerce company or a software company. And of course, they wouldn't be wrong, but they wouldn't be exactly right either. What really drives me, drives us, is the human experience. Every decision we make begins with the question, how does this benefit the people using our products? How can it touch them and inspire them? How can it make them happy and put smiles on their faces? How does it make their shopping experience better? And ultimately, their lives. If we lose sight of that, what are we even doing here? Hi, my name is Sebastian Hamann and I'm co-founder and co-CEO of Shopware. From a very early age, my brother Stefan and I developed the interest and passions that still drives us today. While Stefan was very much into technology, experimenting with all kinds of machines, and at one point taking our dad's keyboard apart with a screwdriver, really, I was more the creative type. I love painting, I love Legos. And at one point, I built this flying pirate ship that became kind of legendary in our family. But there was one passion we definitely shared. And it was really kindled when we got our very first computer. It was so amazing. It was the Commodore C64. And we spent so much time experimenting with it and playing games that our parents finally decided to take our only games cartridge away. Oh my God, the hope was we would get out of the house and play outside with other kids. But just, yeah, Stefan decided, if mom and dad take our games away, I'll just write them myself. Yeah, sure, they weren't the great masterpieces, but it was that moment when we realized how endless the possibilities were in the digital realm. When the first modems and the World Wide Web came along, the sky was the limit. We experimented on software for dial-up providers, we created flash games, we, have, we built many, many websites, and also a part of things to come, web shops. Suddenly, we found ourselves running a business. Also, technically, we weren't even old enough to own one. We hadn't even finished school at this point. But the whole thing really took off, and also, we didn't even have a business plan at this time. We were moving more and more to e-commerce and Boom, Shopware was born. So we hired our first employees, moved into our first offices, and to our surprise, as much as anyone's, more and more merchants started using our platform. So we hired more people, moved into bigger offices, started organizing events to stay in touch with our growing community. And then, inspired by how great and vital and active this community turned out to be, and realizing what all these wonderful people could bring to the table, Stefan suggested to go open source and continue the development of Shopware with the community. Yeah, and then things really went through the roof. So, hi Stefan. Hi. Hey, schön, dass du hier bist und dir die Zeit hierfür genommen hast. Ja, gerne. So, hast du noch äh, vorab irgendwelche Fragen irgendwie zum Ablauf? Um, Ganz wichtige Frage, in welche Kamera muss ich eigentlich gucken? Also, du guckst eigentlich in gar keine Kamera, du guckst eigentlich immer tendenziell zu mir. Ja, dann äh, lass uns loslegen. Hi, I'm Stefan Hamann and I'm Co-Founder and Co-CEO of Shopware. Going open source was a risky move, one that forced us to reinvent ourselves and our business model. Because in the beginning we had to deal with the question, if we give the software away for free, how are we going to make money? That definitely was a question that kept me up at night. When Stefan first told me about the open source idea, I can tell you, I wasn't sure what to think. But what immediately appealed to me was that going open source and putting our face in the community was Stefan's way of doing something that's very important to me, putting humans front and center. 
And in the end, he was right. As he usually is. It all worked. Boy, did it work. The moment we went open source, our growth rate just went through the roof. We went from a few hundred customers to several thousands. And as a result, our community and partner days just kept getting bigger and bigger. The next highlight on the way for me was the introduction of the whole concept of storytelling and emotional shopping with Shopware 5. The idea that online shops should not be these, you know, bland lists where you just pick products of virtual shelves, but tell a story about what's being offered, what makes it special, why it's exciting. To make it emotional and inviting in the same way a good local store does, through form and architecture and lighting, something that was completely missing from online shopping up to that point. And because this release was all about story and emotion, I thought, hey, what better way to introduce this to the world than with a film, where people come together to experience stories. And one that really plays in cinemas too. When I first heard about that film, I thought Sebastian had lost it. But it ended up being a really, really great idea. To this day, people still walk up to me at events and tell me how cool it was to see that film in a real cinema. But half an hour after the credits rolled, my mind was all over the question, what's next? And I remember feeling that to take the step onto an even bigger stage, something that would really turn heads far beyond our existing community, there was only one way to approach it. And that was to start all over again with a blank sheet of paper. For a moment, I thought I was going to get a heart attack. Here we were. We had just launched Shopper 5, storytelling, and all the other new features were crazy successful. And Stefan wants to throw everything out of the window again. Even though I decided to start with a blank sheet of paper, I also wanted to keep most of the functionality we had introduced over the years. I knew how important storytelling was and that it was here to stay. But I also realized that to make an actual leap forward, to create a truly amazing product that is flexible enough to be expanded to anything that comes in the future, that would require completely new thinking and also a completely new code base. I knew it was a risk, but taking risk is a bit of my nature, I guess. Yeah, here we are in our uh, so-called Shopware Lab, where we have ganz, ganz viele unterschiedliche Geräte der Gegenwart und Geräte der Zukunft haben, um äh, natürlich ein Stück weit auch Berührungspunkte damit zu sammeln und zu überlegen, welchen Einfluss können diese Geräte auf unser zukünftiges Leben einnehmen. I have to admit, Stefan's courage to leap without looking and trust in his instincts. Das ist ein sogenannter Glowforge und äh, das Ding hat einen Ho Hochleistungslaser. It's a big part of what drives Shopware forward. Hier sieht man es ja auch und das Ding ist dann so stark, dass es halt eben auch Holzplatten wirklich äh, durchsäbeln kann. Even if it sometimes scares the crap out of me. Also wir machen ständig irgendwelche verrückten Experimente. There have been instances when Stefan has charged maybe a little too far ahead into the future. Also wir haben hier so eine Art abgegrenzten Bereich vorbereitet, wo man sich eben, äh, ohne dass man Angst haben muss, sich zu verletzen, mit der 3D-Pulle richtig austoben kann. Then I... I have to remind him not to lose sight of the one thing that has to remain at the center of all e-commerce. Humans. Obviously, this is true in terms of our customers and the consumers, but it's equally true for our company itself. All the developers, designers, support staff, the front desk people, they are the living, breathing heart of Shopware. And they all share one simple goal. To make outstanding, emotional and engaging shopping experiences. But what exactly is it that makes a shopping experience outstanding, emotional and engaging? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? Obviously, it will have to be tailored to people's needs and desires. Also, any shopping experience must integrate seamlessly into their daily lives. But finding out what 
that really means in concrete terms is important. And this is something you can't figure out by staring at a wall and thinking really hard. Instead, you have to ask the people who approach this question using hard science. Hello, my name is Ulrich Köhler and I'm the managing director of the trend research agency Trendbüro. We focus on analyzing the major consumer trends and evaluating all kinds of different data sets to predict how they will change in the future. Our goal is for businesses to be best prepared for the challenges ahead of them. Among the most important shifts we're currently witnessing is a move in consumer demands and expectations towards more sustainable, higher quality products with longer life cycles. Also, we can see a clear trend towards even greater individualism with increasing value being placed on personal freedom. And with this emphasis on personal choice, the entire experience around that choice, the journey of selecting, buying and then using products is gaining importance in a way not seen until recently. Looking at the major consumer trends through the lens of e-commerce can lead to only one conclusion. Online shops have to move away from being these bland warehouses and instead offer experiences that complement the individual value-based expectation of today's consumers. All players active in the world of e-commerce need to move away from being simple vendors and start reinventing themselves as unique brands that offer distinctive, unmistakable experiences. So, starting with Shopware 5, that's exactly what we focused on by introducing the storytelling feature. If, as an e-commerce company, you want to offer something that reliably works for merchants, you need to make both your technological and your creative choices based on research and facts. Because if you don't, if you just work off a hunch or a feeling, you're essentially going to be a snake oil salesman. And all the while, it's vital that we never forget that humans have to be at the center of everything what we do. When Sebastian talks about humans being front and center for shopware, he usually thinks about the consumers who use the online shops in the end. But there is a second aspect to this principle, and that's our community. When we went open source, I spent more than a few sleepless nights thinking about how are we still going to make money if we basically give everything away for free. But in reality, the advantages of how much Shopware has improved as a platform, the incredible support and sharing of knowledge the community has brought to the table, of the thousands of plugins that are now available. Even more than 10 years later, it still blows my mind thinking about where this decision put us. And all this was really encouraging when it came to the decision to start all over again with Shopware 6. I felt we had built something truly remarkable with Shopware 5, especially with the introduction of storytelling. It was just beginning to fire on all cylinders as more and more brands and agencies were truly starting to grasp the possibilities this concept offered. So naturally, I was a bit reluctant to risk all this for yet another jump into the deep end. But as Stefan started to outline his vision and explain the kind of flexibility the new code base would bring, I started to realize that he was right that this was exactly what brands and merchants would need to meet the challenges they face today and will face even more in the future. So as he walked us through what this new baby would be able to do, I realized this is going to be big. This has the potential to really shake up the e-commerce world. Und er ist das Design Mastermind. Im Gepäck hat er, jetzt spreche ich es mal aus, Shopware 6. Schon mal ein kleiner Start- und Motivationsapplaus. First time. Sebastian Hartmann. Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Und ganz herzlich willkommen zum Shopware Community Day 2019. Hier in Duisburg. Ich habe mich wahnsinnig auf diesen Tag gefreut. Vor allen Dingen freue ich mich, dass so viele von euch heute hier sind. 
Shopware 6 is a platform where all the pieces we have been juggling with for years really come together in one big package. A super flexible core, headless and completely open source. That allows us to create the right tool set to react to the rapidly changing forms of customer journeys. Where the classic digital store frontend is challenged by other sales channels like social media. Merchants will have the ability to adjust and even completely change their business models from one moment to the next, all without having to write a single line of code. This is the biggest leap forward ever since we went open source in 2010. Now we really have the platform, or better yet, the ecosystem, to truly and fully expand onto the international stage. After Sebastian's keynote at the Community Day 2019 and the audience reaction, to what we had shown there. Boy, I couldn't wait. 2020 was going to be the best year ever. And then what happened? When the first news of this virus in China hit, we reacted like I think most people did. That's it. We didn't take it too seriously. It seems so far away on the other side of the world. But when the first cases in Germany started cropping up and quickly turned into full-blown hotspots, I started getting that uneasy feeling that maybe things will be different this time. When it became clear how dangerous this thing was, our responsibility for the well-being of our employees meant there was only one thing we could do and that was to send everyone home.